Hi guys, I hope you feel well. Uh, today we will uh, start sequential probability ratio test. Uh, so in this case, basically sample size is not fixed, and we start with a very small sample size, like n equals to one, and then we uh, try to decide or either reject or not reject or continue taking sample cases. Uh, sometimes it's very costly uh, for companies to take like samples of size thirty or more. Uh, so if they need to uh, use so smaller sample sizes, get the decision using the smaller sample sizes, we need to use a sequential probability ratio test. So we are sequentially taking the samples and in each step we uh, decide reject, not reject or continue taking samples as I told you before. Uh, so here uh, we need to know both uh, type of errors. So this should be given to us. So, um, both probability of type 1 error and type 2 error uh, should be given to us. Uh, sample size is a random variable. Ratio test. It is SPRT. Okay. Uh, again, here we consider only we have a single um, unknown parameter. Um, and we start with a single sample size. And is not fixed. Okay. So first I will show you how to derive the testing procedure and you will see that the uh, uh, the application of the test is very very easy so you have to just remember few things uh, to be able to solve the problem. Actually uh, here we gave uh, so you can solve this with um, uh, any type of um, most powerful test or UMP type type of test. Um, so let's say uh, we have a simple hypothesis, both simple, but we can apply it for the uh, composite one-sided uh, also. Okay, uh, the most um, important thing is here alpha and beta uh, are given to us. Okay, um, so to be able to satisfy these um, given alpha and beta values, to be able to satisfy a given, especially beta value, uh, we may need to have a large uh, sample size in the known uh, testing procedures. So it might be too costly for the company and the procedure that requires fewer sample size is the sequential test. Okay, so here we are taking the sample sequentially. So X, take first X1 and do the testing procedure, apply, and then take the second one if the result is continue and go, it goes like that. And at each new observation, we make a decision as to reject a0, accept a0, um, or 
continue taking observations. So this is the procedure. So here n is a random variable, but basically we will not define any um, distribution to n. Uh, so we are sequentially increase the sample size, and based on the results, this uh, on the decision or reject, accept, uh, or continue, uh, we will uh, apply the testing procedure. So we will not define any uh, sample probability distribution to n. Okay, so here uh, basically the basic uh, aim of this test, uh, the expected sample size uh, under both uh, null and alternative hypothesis here, because we are using both uh, type of errors here, should be less than the regular sample size of the classical tests. And so these are, you know, the best tests. By name of Pearson Lemma. Okay, um, so we know that SPRT uh, is more economical uh, than the regular uh, testing procedure on the average. So we can end up with the same result actually. On the average, as compared. Uh, to classical tests. Okay, so the procedure starts like that. When n equals to 1, we can reject a0 or accept a0. Accept a0 at x1. Or the result can be continue. Okay, so then we have an OR here, okay, um, so then uh, if it is not, then we will continue. We are using the continue probability as a condition in the second step, okay, so we are not considering this in the step. Uh, so it is the probability of reject A0 at X1 plus we are using accept A0 at x1 okay or take the second sample so we have a condition here continue at x1 and we have an and here you know in terms of probability we have to use multiplication again reject or accept a0 at x2 Okay, so uh, then the probability of n equals to 2 here, so basically we are deriving the distribution, probability distribution like that, so we are not saying that it should be Poisson or, uh, or another continuous distribution. So probability of continue at x1 times, because we have an and, probability of reject h0, at x2 plus probability of except a0 at x2 okay so this is the procedure so we will go like that okay uh, till uh, so these are the probabilities actually it goes till uh, an unknown and so we have to decide it. So we have a simple likelihood ratio, remember, with n, actually here n is important, uh, L and theta 1. So this is the simple likelihood ratio and it is a function of n, right now, uh, different than the previous procedures, we have xn, okay? Um, so we have a sample random variables function of sample random variables and n. So this is our, you know, simple likelihood ratio for specific n. And uh, you know how to find the likelihood uh, function. Uh, basically, uh, we are usually we are using random sample procedure and it will be the multiplication of marginal PDFs uh, mathematically. So we have... Uh, uh, testing procedure reject a0 
sum uh, for each n ln less than or equal to some k0 value except a0 as soon as l sub n simple like to the ratio at uh, sample size n greater than or equal to k1 okay so it's not k0 so these are different so we need to find both k0 and k1 but we have a nice uh, testing procedure here so when we have an inconclusive continue if our ln is between k0 and k1 so basically here uh, the equality in the rejection and acceptance region very important okay so put the continue uh, no equality in the continued case so here in the continuous case we have inconclusive we are inconclusive okay so basically if you remember the the name of Pearson lemma is it gives us the best test most powerful test test okay uh, so in that case we have reject a0 if l sub n less than or equal to k and we have not reject or let's say accept a0 if this l sub n greater than k so our testing procedure was like that and by to be able to find uh, l or k sorry uh, we need to use uh, type and any probability which is given to us ln less than or equal to k okay and then under this condition then we know the value we can find the value of uh, k here but now we have both k0 and k1 these are unknown okay so let's write our rejection region and acceptance region and continue region let's say we have a c sub and define the region that we have let's say we have a sample of size n it could be just one actually so we have uh, we have the cases uh, in the first sample um, or for the nth step actually so this is, this, is, this is a general case so this means that to be able to get the uh, rejection region for the nth step we have to not reject and continue taking samples for n minus one cases so then l sub j should be between k0 and k1 for j equals to 1 to n minus 1 right and we have to add the here comma l sub n should be less than or equal to k0 so this is our rejection region when n is greater than or equal to 2 okay so previous n minus case we uh, our conclusion is inconclusive so we continue taking samples so we are in this region for the n minus 1 uh, sample for the n sample are uh, we are rejecting a0 except case same let's define it by b sub n okay so we have a sample of size n such that again for uh, n minus one samples our decision is inconclusive uh, so our simple lactose ratio is in this region but for the last one it is greater than or equal to k1 okay so again sample is greater than or equal to 2 so continue case so let's say we have dn again we have a sample uh, of size n such that so in this case basically for all n cases we are inconclusive right our decision is inconclusive so we continue taking samples so let's say so this is j so j equals to 1 to n okay this part is n greater than or equal to one case okay so basically we don't have just two partition of the sample space so now we have a three uh, partition of the sample space cn b sub n and d sub n are the partition of the sample uh, space by um, for actually uh, 
for any n. So basically here's probability of C n, probability of B n and probability of D n gives us one. So we can say that uh, rejection region is not just the reverse of the uh, acceptance region, not the reverse of the rejection region in this case. Okay, then how can we define our uh, type 1 error? Uh, for n, actually for specific n. So we have probability of reject H0 when tj equal theta 0. Okay, general definition. So here, probability of reject A0 at n equals to 1 or at n equals to 2 uh, or it goes like that. Okay, given theta equal theta 0. So how can we do that? So now our n is from 1 to infinity. It goes like that. So probability that or x1 values is in the rejection region given theta equal theta 0. Okay. Um, then we can say that, so start with this first sample. So x1 is in the uh, critical region when n equals to 1, theta equal theta 0, or probability that. Uh, when we have two sample cases, it's in the rejection region, theta equal theta 0, plus it goes like that. Then when we take the third sample, x1, x2, x3 is in the uh, in the rejection region. So it, it goes till infinity in this case. So n equals to 1 to infinity. And let's say we have a continuous random variable, otherwise we have, you know, we have to use summation. So our uh, type of energy is this. And consider the power probability that reject a0 at theta equals to 1. And similar procedure applies. And we will end up with again the same result, but in the rejection region now our theta is theta 1. Okay, so basically we will define our k0 and k1 by using both alpha and beta because these are uh, two given quantities to us. So then what, what, what is the procedure? So we have a rejection region, reject a0, given theta equals theta 0, plus we have an acceptance region, accept a0, theta equals theta 0, plus we have an inconclusive result when theta equals theta 0. So this equals to 1. Okay, uh, so this could be for theta 1 also, uh, for the power, okay, and it can be shown that, I will not give the proof here, it can be shown that this part equals to 0, okay, so then what we have here is probability that reject a0 given theta equal theta 0. Uh, plus probability of uh, is very close to very close to zero, okay. Um, except a zero. So when n goes to infinity, basically when n increases, it goes to zero. I I should say, except a zero when theta equals theta zero. So this is close to one. Okay, not exactly equals to. So then when we write the uh, probabilities, uh, n equals to 1 from 0, uh, we have an integral in the rejection region ln theta 0, which is our alpha, plus again n equals to 1 from infinity, integral ln this time theta 1. So this is very close to 1, and this is our beta. Okay, uh, so now we want to derive uh, our testing procedures. Then, um, uh, oh, sorry, um, this should be not the CM. Um, this is this should be BN, right? 
and so okay because this is not under this one so it's zero so then what we, sh we can write n equals one to infinity b sub n m n theta zero equals to one minus alpha okay okay uh, then uh, what can be um, said about that then um, then the same thing for theta 1 actually we can write probability that reject a0 when theta equals theta 1 plus probability that except h0 when theta equals theta 1 very close to 1 again with the conclusive case and writing the probabilities in the rejection region ln theta 1 so now this is 1 minus beta uh, uh, power and n equals to 1 to uh, infinity acceptance region defined by bn ln theta 1 is equals to 1 so this is 1 minus beta uh, so then we can define r beta by n equals to 1 from infinity in the rejection region and on theta 1 so this is beta so if our uh, sample values are in the rejection region then we have this procedure less than or equal to k0 uh, okay so we have ln theta 0 less than or equal to k0 ln theta 1 okay so this means that alpha which is this one in the rejection region and ln theta 0 less than or equal to an infinity in the rejection region k0 times ln theta 1 right and then how can we write this k0 can go out and write this c n l and theta 1 here and from 1 to infinity so this is definition of 1 minus beta so this means that k0 should be greater than or equal to alpha over 1 minus beta okay so i need to give a break uh, or i have i will continue in the next slide okay thank you